It's Song Talk Radio. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me, my co-host, Phil Emery. How are you doing, Phil? I'm very good, Neil, and um, it's going to be a great show, I think. I do believe you are right about that, Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we have a great guest tonight. Uh, Tonight's guest is Maggie Andrew. How are you, Maggie? I'm amazing. So excited to be here. Awesome. Dialing in from Nova Scotia. We're all uh, different time zones, which is very cool. That's Um, right. And for everyone else, no matter what time zone you're in, please send your comments and questions to at Song Talk Radio on Facebook or Instagram or feedback at songtalk.ca for the email and we'll share your thoughts on the show. And please visit songtalk.ca to see, see the show post for this episode to find links to resources we mentioned and to download lyric and chord sheets to follow along with the songs that we feature. And uh, before we get to um, the main event for the show tonight, um, we just want to give <clears throat> a little bit of a heads up uh, to this newish band um, that's that's been performing um, mostly around uh, uh, southern Ontario, um, Ottawa, places like that. Um, they're called the uh, the Troubadours, uh, classic Troubadours live. They perform the greatest songs by James Taylor, Joni Mitchell, Jackson Brown, and Carol King. And the cool thing about this band is that two of our most favorite guests that we've had on the show, Jacob Moon and Alex Worms, um, both of them from Hamilton, Ontario, which is no wonder they started collaborating. <laughs> um, and uh, so they, 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 I don't know if they started the band or not, but they're, they're in the band along with uh, Rob Brown on drums, Ma- Mark McIntyre on bass and Ashley St. Pierre on vocals. Uh, Jacob Moon, um, if you, if you're familiar with, if, with him or you've seen him, heard him on the podcast, uh, guitar and vocals and Alex Worms on piano and, and vocals. So, um definitely if you're into those classic uh uh folk pop songwriters definitely check these guys out um they're constantly posting on social media with little examples of their performances and stuff and they are they got the stuff down <laughs> yeah they, <laughs> they are great uh and it's interesting because jacob moon is very established and um alex is uh you know sort of starting out so it's interesting seeing those two people work on a project together you know yeah for sure very interesting yeah, absolutely. Okay, and um, we love getting emails from our listeners, and um, especially we end up we love getting emails uh, from our listeners who contributed to our songwriting challenge <laughs> this yes. year, um, which is which is really cool. And um, so a, a few weeks ago, uh, we did two episodes where we showcased the listener songs, um, uh, the listeners who submitted um, songs to our songwriting challenge to write in an unusual mode. So thank you once again, you guys, for sharing uh, your songs and your process that was a really cool awesome uh, couple stuff. of episodes we had um <clears throat> so many so many uh talented songwriters out there definitely check them out um and uh, uh a few of them uh, got back to us after um after the uh episodes that we that we talked about their songs um Gerben westerfeld from uh who's um from the Netherlands, uh, wrote back and said, Phil, Neil, thank you for the kind words. You are right about the modal interchange. I completely missed the challenge. No, you didn't. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Funny you, you noticed the instrumental part. I tried to add a bridge, but uh, the song didn't seem to need it. On the other hand, I needed something between verse and chorus. That's why I came up with the instrumental part. So in a way, it is an instrumental bridge. Okay, yeah. challenge accepted. I'll try again and write a song in a mode. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Our listeners now have homework. <laughs> yeah, and 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 actually, he he did write a, another email earlier. He said Domar, which is which is a band that you missed, um, Phil, from back in the day. You couldn't yes. find them again. And Domar used to be one of the biggest bands here in the Netherlands. One of the two lead singers died about a year ago. Um, mm-hmm. I'll get back to you and fill in the blanks because there's a lot to be told about those guys. So, so they were huge in the Netherlands, and we and we did actually track them down. Um, we put a link um, on the on the show post um, to. Yeah, to Dumar. <laughs> well, because I remember um, uh, uh, a Dutch friend of mine gave me uh, this cassette tape, and it was you oh. know just dubbed and just said Dumar on it, and I didn't know anything about it. Of course, it's it was all in in Dutch, and I don't speak a lot of Dutch or any at all, any? really. <laughs> um, but I always thought the music was really interesting because a lot of ska music can be very simple. Hmm. It's often one, four, five not necessarily melodically complex. I mean, sometimes it is, and it's the, you know, the writer of the specials did some uh, complicated things. Yeah, um, 
and the beat certainly did some interesting things. But in general, it's not the most complicated music. Whereas Dumar had some really interesting musical um, twists and uh, melodies and chord choices, still sounding poppy, but still still sounding very ska. And um, they were really good. And it was great going through all those old videos on YouTube. And I swear I looked it up in, on YouTube and I didn't, maybe uh -huh. I, I wasn't spelling it right, yeah, although yeah. I'm pretty sure I was. Anyways, um, it was great to hear all this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. The band was formed in like 78 or 79 uh, mm -hmm. in the Netherlands and was, was huge all over uh, Europe to the point where there's, you know, huge... Um, huge crowds of screaming uh, teen girls and uh, people mopping the uh, hotels where they um, st um, hung out and being stuck in North America. It's so easy to think that our world is the whole world, mm -hmm. but it's not. I remember finding out when uh, going to see a, um, a, the band AHA came to play to Toronto once and I thought, oh, mm -hmm. one hit wonder. AHA was huge in Europe. They had like 10 mm -hmm. albums and uh, they they uh, filled Massey Hall in Toronto uh, I think for a couple of nights uh, to the Raptors, sold mm -hmm. out shows and everyone knew every one of their songs. So it's, you know, the world is much bigger than um, the North America. Who knew? Mm -hmm. But yeah, Absolutely. so it was, yeah. Thank you for that stuff on Dubar. It was uh, yeah. a wonderful trip back to some uh, favorite band of mine. Yeah, yeah, and of course I never heard of them, but when I when I hit them on Spotify, I was like, oh wow, sounds sounds like the specials, but in Dutch. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> really needs them. Okay, um, yeah, and uh, we also hear, heard back from uh, from Greg Fraser, um, who submitted his song to our challenge, um, <clears throat> and uh, he says, uh, "Thanks, Phil and Neil. I listened to the show this afternoon. It was great to hear how different all three songs were. You're right about the pre-chorus. I added two beats uh, to the pre-chorus." to create some contrast between that section and the verse and chorus. Um, I probably should have mentioned that in my song notes. <laughs> uh, also, I really enjoyed both of your songs for the challenge. Anyway, thanks so much for the opportunity. I will keep listening and look forward to your 2024 challenge. Cool. Well, he says that now. He says that now, but he, he already did it by switching time signatures in the... Oh, that's well... In, in his, in his yeah, song. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so thank you, Greg, uh, for writing back. Um, and we heard back uh, from Victor Hathaway um, as well. Um, and uh, he says, Phil and Neil, thanks so much to you and uh, to, to you guys for taking the time for my song and for your commentary, which I appreciated very much. I did get a kick of your a kick out of your discussion of the song's form. You guys sounded like my bandmates when I hand them a piece with an unusual structure. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, but I thought the G minor section, you know, on most in utmost stillness work like a bridge between the Phrygian section and the B flat major final stanza. Mm -hmm. And just like you, I was tempted to cycle around to the Phrygian section for a final verse to resolve because it felt like it had ended nowhere. But I try to hold myself uh, to a strict rule, which I end up breaking too often. And uh, when you said what you come to say, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what you said when you've come to say shut up <laughs> um, and I feel like I was there uh, so yeah. Neil guessed right I hinted at a return with a brief instrumental before letting the song just disappear into the G major chord and that's uh, when I got my title interesting um, nice. uh, as you know in art theory the vanishing point um, happens when a couple of parallel lines like railroad tracks or the side of a road trail off into the horizon, coming closer and closer until they join um, in a point and vanish out of sight. What I realized was was what I had been saying in the verses. Damn, I wish I was. I wish I were so clever, but it was all subconscious. <laughs> uh, the Beatles followed the sun, but I followed the song. Uh, I never would have written the song about your without your challenge, and I owe you and Neil a bit a debt of gratitude. Uh, I found something inside myself I didn't know was there. Yours awesome. truly, Victor. That's awesome. amazing, Victor. Yeah. I just wanted to hear more of the song. That was it, I think, for me. Mm -hmm. it ended. I sort of thought, oh, maybe we could have had some more, but. Yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. You can always rewind and play it again. That's um, true. It's it's better to be too short than too long. I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So thanks again to our listeners. You guys are awesome, and thanks for getting back to us um, on those things. And uh, and if you haven't checked out the um, 
the songwriting challenge stuff from this year. We do have a web page um, that's still there on our on our website on the sidebar songwriting challenge 2023 and all the content from that um, related to that challenge is there, including the first episode we did talking about modes um, with Jeff Allen Greenway. You know, this the episodes where we shared our answers to the challenge, the listener episodes, a bunch of resources and stuff. It's still um, it's still worth looking at if you if you're new to the podcast and and you missed doing the challenge. You know, so. feel free to feel free to investigate a little bit and feel free to send over a song. We'll be happy to to share it. Um, you know, yeah, on, on the podcast as well. So and not, you can always um, and, and and don't forget to send stuff, emails, or your finished songs to feedback at songtalk.ca. Yeah, and, we always, uh, love, yeah. always love hearing stuff from you guys. It's great stuff. Okay, on to the main event. <laughs> uh, creating music that journeys far beyond the confines of genre, Nova Scotia's Maggie Andrew infuses her style of modern salt pop with confident, relatable lyrics that often challenge stereotypical norms. Layered with punk, R&B, hip-hop, and rock, Andrew's textured and edgy songs are boldly charming and stunningly innovative. With frank and straightforward lyrics that leave little room for misinterpretation, Maggie Andrew is an artist who knows Knows what she wants to say and says it exactly as she means it. Her artistry extends into all aspects of her career, where she also serves as creative director for her photo and video shoots along with her project artwork. Having worked with some of the biggest producers in the industry today, including Ash Riser, Kendrick Lamar, A.B. Soul, Doc McKinney, The Weeknd and Drake, and Yeti Beats, Doja Cat and SZA, Andrew's music has reached over 5 million streams globally. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, Maggie Andrew. Thank you so much. I love that introduction. That's so awesome, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that was that was that was your PR introduction. <laughs> Just read it. Well done. Um, it's nice. It's well, I'll read it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're going to be talking to Maggie about her song uh, "Better Than You." And uh, first things first, we're going to take a listen to the song. And um, so, cue it up, Phil, and hit it. My shoes are untied. I hate when me and my mom fight. It's sunny outside, but in here it feels like night. Sometimes I laugh without smiling. Sometimes I laugh when I'm violent. Sometimes I laugh when it feels like I'm dying inside my beautiful mind. They always ask me who really hurts you. You know everyone's got the issues. You're such a jerk Your favorite band is Walk Off the Earth And I wish that you would Push you off the edge if I could Always bring a gun to a knife fight You love coke but I only drink spray Probably still think about me with your jeans on tight When I was asking who really hurt you Very cool. <laughs> it's a pretty slamming track. Yeah, great, great stuff. So, um, so tell us, Maggie, what's what's the process for writing a song for you? Do you start with a title, with lyrics, with a <laughs> great question? Uh, it always depends on who's in the room with me or like what the vibe is. I'm very like my process is never the same. Whenever I write a song, it's always 
different, like different parts of the song will come to me at different times. But with this one in particular, I was at a song camp. Um, so it was me, a producer, and so two co-writers with me, uh, Carlson Stone and Willie Stratton, two amazing musicians on their own. And then it was my first time getting to write with them. I got in the room and I kind of lost my voice the night before. So going in, I was like, all right, I'm not going to be singing a ballad today. So I was like, we need to write something that has attitude. It's fun. It's nothing too deep in our feelings. Like we're not making anyone cry with this. So I was like, let's make something where I can yell because I can't sing. My falsetto was gone. So it was like, I could yell though. (laughs) So then we kind of came up with this idea of, all the things that you would say to an old flame or an old love or old friend, just someone that you have a lot of angst toward, like all of the things that you want to say to them, let's put them in a song. And that's where we started. Oh, wow. Do you do a lot of co-writing? Um, I didn't at first, but now it's something I've grown to really love. I just find when you're writing with other people, your ideas get 10 times better because you're just saying, hey, what about this? And then they're getting an idea and you're just going back and forth and... So lately, yeah, all of my releases have been co-writes because I write better with other people. I'll come up with sometimes the bulk of an idea in the corner in my bedroom, just like messing around on logic and thinking about words. And then I go see my producer friends and like, hey, I kind of came up with this. What do you think we can do with it? And then we just start building and it becomes a great production. Oh. Yeah, how are you, you, say you, sorry, you, you say you didn't start out collaborating a lot is there something you would tell yourself back then that you know now that you didn't know then that you would uh, in your I just think I didn't have the opportunity back then because I mean I, it wasn't a thing that existed to me so I learned how to write songs by playing guitar in my bedroom and I used to write a lot of poetry growing up so I was like let's I got a guitar I taught myself I was like let's turn some of these lyrics into songs so that was like my gateway into starting to write music and then I just kind of did it on my own for a few years and the only real reason or way I got into co-writing was my brother was moving to LA I wrote a song in my bedroom and sent it to him he was like you need to get out here and record this and I was like I'm in Nova Scotia I've never been to LA I'm scared he's like you need to get out here so I went out for two weeks and he introduced me to a friend of his and we just Obviously, those recordings never came out, but it was I spent a week in the studio just with an acoustic guitar and engineer, and we just recorded all of these songs that I had written. Then I came back to Nova Scotia and went back two weeks later, and that's really when everything I started meeting people, and then it's like you're getting invited to sessions or people want to work with you and see what you're about. And that's kind of that was around the time when I met Yeti Beats too. That was at the very beginning of my career. It was one night in LA, my brother took me with that song I wrote in a basement in Nova Scotia, sent to him on a voice note. My very first like studio recording was with Yeti. And that whole experience was like, it was such a learning moment where it's like, okay, this is how you record and you're in the booth and you know, you're learning what a metronome is and like (laughs) how to stay on beat. And everybody knows me. I'm pretty like loosey goosey when I sing. I just like to feel what I feel. So just learning that and then Yeti being like, what do you want in in the recording and stuff like that? It's Then I started to learn that, oh, I don't have to write all the songs by myself because other people have ideas and makes the process a little bit easier. And especially sometimes you're not trying to like write something that is from an experience in your life or something that you've gone through. It's like, let's just like, here's a word and let's start mm-hmm. writing lyrics and Mm-hmm. That kind of introduced me to that whole world, and I've been obsessed with it ever since. <laughs> cool. So you went down to L.A., and um, that was how you found your co-writers? Pretty much. It was like, it's where I first experienced writing with other human beings, and then we were making songs that were really, really good. And due to the pandemic, I was out in L.A. for three years, and then because of the mm-hmm. pandemic, came back to Nova Scotia, and I didn't start my career in the province that I was from. So I came back and it's like, oh, there's like these established people who are here. I don't really know where I'm supposed to start or how do I get into the scene here? Mm. But I got invited to a songwriting camp. And due to that songwriting camp, I got to co-write with like 12 different people that week. And Mm. ever since then, I've been invited to the songwriting camp since that. And it just introduced me to a whole different side of my writing world 
because I never thought I could write the songs that I wrote with other people. But you let other people in and they can unlock part of your brain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, writing with other people is is so much fun and it always makes you better because, yeah, you know, it's it's easy. Some people have the personality. And I do have that personality of just doing everything on my own just because I've always sort of done it. Yeah. But um, when you do work, you get working with great people. It's just everything is so easy. It's amazing. You know, it's nice yeah. to have someone else do some rowing. Yeah, because you can't be good at everything. And that's just the way that the world is. And it's like you get in the room with other people and they have something different to offer you than you could offer yourself. So you kind of just have to like learn to, for me, it was like, oh, just get over yourself and like go say those ideas in a room full of people and see what they think about them and what they could add to it because they're looking at it in a different perspective than you. So, yeah, and I think I think that's probably an important point because if you if you if you approach it with an inflated ego and be like you know i know what's best for the song and then yeah i mean <clears throat> you, you, you i mean we can all say it sounds easy but you must have been in at least one or two circumstances where you know heads are button and what do you do then <laughs> yeah i used to like even just in the last two years i'm very again i'm very particular in what sounds that i like what mm -hmm my ears are very sounds and melody oriented and like certain words, certain stuff. So I'm very quick or not anymore, but I used to be very quick to be like, no, I don't like that. Mm. Then I was like, all right, you know what? Sometimes we're just going in and we don't have any, there's no placement for the song. No one knows who we're writing a song for, or who's going to take it, if it's even going to come out. So then someone has an idea, just like let them talk for a little bit. And then maybe it might not be the right thing, but sometimes it is and if you shut it down too quickly then like you don't want your co-writers and your collaborators to feel bad about their ideas because then it's not going to be vulnerable and honest or you know then someone feels weird in the room yeah Ooh. and you yeah. just don't want that yeah, that's, that's absolutely true it's a very very good point there's this concept in improv which i thought was um i did one little thing at uh, second city in toronto which was just a blast if you ever get a chance to to do that, it's very free and a lot of fun. Um, but the thing with with um, improv is that you never say no. The whole thing with improv is you say yes and. So the idea is you take the idea, even if it's some crappy idea, but you add to it. And yeah. it's amazing what that process will bring out because you have a crappy idea, but you start adding on to it and suddenly it becomes this idea that you never would have had before. Yeah, exactly that. It's I've had moments where we're writing a song, someone will say something, but then it's like, oh, this idea led us to where we got now because mm. maybe you said something, it wasn't the right line, but what you said in it, the the sentiment was right. And then so now we're like, let's keep going with this. Yeah, yeah. Don't exactly. stop the train when it's on the tracks, you know, <laughs> like just <laughs> keep it going. So do you, do you find that you collaborate better in, in the areas where you have gaps? Like if you're if you're very strong on lyric and melody, you you lean on others to to develop the, the you know the groove, the chord progression, the yeah, the like chord choices. Is I that have a thing? this plugin. It's called Kasulu. My producer friend showed it to me, and I don't know how to play piano very well. Where I'm playing a bunch of like crazy chords or anything, but this plugin you just press one key and you can get different presets. So they all have like all kinds of pop songs that use these same chords, but you're using like the CDE keys on the key on the MIDI and you're just pressing them and it's making a progression for you. And I mm. got that. And there's a bunch of like classical music stuff in there. There's like a bunch of like Beethoven and Bach like chords. And I'm like, I obviously could never play these because you're using like, all 10 of your fingers. Yeah. But it's just like, I hear them and I, I wrote a couple ideas just from messing around with those and getting in there. And then it's like, all right, here's the MIDI of what I messed around with. And then I'll send that to my producer or just someone who I know knows how to work a doll. And they'll open it up and they're like, great, I have all these ideas, these sounds, all this stuff. They'll come back to me. And then it's like, they'll put their own spice on it without me being there and giving my opinion so that I can hear where their head is at. And then we'll like deconstruct after that. Like it literally just did it today with a new song. And it's like, 
you get all of the good stuff and then I'll listen to it. And I'm like, all right, this is a great song, but how do we make it sound like a Maggie Andrew song? Like, what is it missing? It sounds like a great tune, but we need to just make sure that it has that Maggie Andrew touch. Mm-hmm. And that's, so yeah, that's kind of like the most important part. But what I, I just, I really love having a producer. Cause when I write, I like to, I don't like making demos. I like making songs. So it's like, if I leave the studio and I'm with a producer, I love, to finish writing the song that day and leave with a balance of whatever we did so that I can keep working on the things in my brain to make it finished. Cause I love the feeling of finishing a song, especially when you have co-writers and a team kind of working on it with you. It's like the best feeling in the world. You, you typically finish the songwriting process in a, in a day or do you, do you take that first day's work and then continue tweaking lyrics and melodies again and it depends and... on who i'm collaborating with and like what because i since being back in nova scotia i've definitely had to adjust to other people's styles of working mm-hmm. where it's like oh we love to write and you know but i'm like all right cool i'm like urgent i'm like i need a song like we need to finish this so if i have time with someone blocked off at a studio it's like let's get the most out of all our time while we're here don't want to waste time just want to have a great time together working on this thing and leave with something that we're proud of. So usually it'll be lately. It's kind of been like just writing the song start to finish, but then we'll go back and we'll be like, Hey, since we wrote this like second verse, maybe we should revisit the first verse that we had and what inspired the song and kind of, cause now we're just getting on track with the song and the way that it should sound. And, you know, sonically where it's sitting, it's like, you can always go back in and make improvements. So I definitely, a couple of my songs, it was like bang on first day finished. And then the production was what needed work, but the yeah. lyrical yeah. content was complete. And sometimes you just have a song inside you and you're going to get it out. Okay. I wanted to ask about that because uh, when you're working on a song on your own, there's the process where you, you know, you're working on your lyrics and your, and your structure and you can, keep on going back and refining it and tweaking it and, and experimenting in a very kind of personal um, kind of detail um, approach. Can you do the same thing with when you're working with other people? Can you have the same kind of detail or does it tend to be a little bit more um, blocky for less? lack of a better word. Some, yeah, some, it can be 50, 50. I think it's definitely like when you're writing on your own, I find, or at least for me, usually when I'm writing on my own, I get the bulk of what I'm trying to say. Sometimes when I write songs, I have this thing, like I have a couple songs. I didn't write them with any like chord progressions or melody. It was like just words. A couple of times I had a dream and there was a song and I woke up and I had to just write out the lyrics. And then I sat with what was supposed to be the chorus. And I kind of like had this melody idea in my head, but I didn't know how to play. I couldn't translate that into an instrument. So then it's, I got into the studio with the producers who were working on that track with all the words and we recorded it. And I kind of sang in what melody I thought. And then they built production around that, which was a super interesting kind of way to work because it was like we're both separately working on the same song and we're here together and then it's like all right you dropped all your vocals like get out of here (laughs) we're gonna like work on this and then we'll send you something later so it's definitely yeah it's a little bit harder when you're with someone else to kind of just touch on like lyrics and because when you're alone and you're writing you're in a certain moment and you're never going to like get back into that same headspace that you were when the idea came to you. It's like, you have to revisit that and explain to your co-writer. If you're bringing them in to write on an, on an idea that you had, you have to like fill them in on the whole thing so that they can kind of understand and write from those feelings or they can come down on your level. Hmm. Very cool. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about better, better than you. So was this one written in, was this a one, one day, right? Kind of thing. Yeah, this was written at a song camp where uh, right. basically the idea of how the song camp works is you do two sessions a day. So you do one in the morning, one in the afternoon. I think you have two or three hours with your co-writers to like get it done or get what you can done. But this song just kind of like came to us in that moment. And it's it's a pretty fun song. It's straightforward. So the lyrics weren't like 
there's no secret messages or any mm. secrets. It's straightforward. <laughs> it's fun. You get the whole point of what the song is about. And yeah, so writing again, it was my first time writing with Willie Stratton and Carlton Stone together. Willie is like his energy. He plays guitar. He's one of the best guitar players I know. So I just knew walking in there, I was like, Willie, you're definitely playing guitar on this track. And he started just doing those little chugs and we're like, all right. Mm. Like, I hate when my shoes are untied. And I remember that was the first thing I said. Carlton was like, what did you just say? I was like, I hate when my shoes are untied because my shoe was untied. Mm -hmm. Like That's the first lyric. And that's how the song opened up. And he was like, just say some more stuff. I was like, okay. (laughs) Wow. Starting from the top. Yeah, literally it was basically that. And then we got to the chorus and the chorus, it just needed that attitude punch and i was like what if we just say something i know like if you said it in real life you're like i'm a 10 year or two but i was like if we say that in a song people want to hear that people like want that energy so i was like let's say that and then say i'm better than you <laughs> yeah. like, all right great yeah. well, so then, i mean especially when you do it with that kind of anthemic attitude yeah like it comes across differently than exactly know, than, than kind of boasting yeah. or whatever like yeah so yeah it was better than you carlton is very he's one of the best songwriters that i know so then it was like we're writing this there's a couple little lines in there that just came from him and i was like i don't know how you think about that but it's incredible like <laughs> your his, his melodies too like he came up with a lot of the melodies for the chorus and i was like you know what gets stuck in people's heads so just all of this like coming together Willie has that like electric guitar, like Elvis Presley, Buddy Holly, like feel to him. And I was like, we're mashing all these things together and we're making the craziest song that probably any of us have ever written in a co-write because it's kind of outside of all our genres. And it became this like super dope song that people are loving. And I didn't know what the reaction would be like to it. I know that one line in the second verse, uh, <laughs> your favorite band is Walk Off the Earth. I was like, I was like, is Walk Off the Earth going to get mad at me for that? But now I'm like, I hope they hear my song. Like, that's just a <laughs> funny thing to say to someone. <laughs> well, well, there's always bands that sort of, you know, do divide people. Um, yeah. Although I never thought Walk Off the Earth was like that, but, you know. I don't think so. They're not. I don't know. I, I thought it was just funny because I was like, yeah. what's a band name? Like, your favorite band is what? Like, you want this person to walk off the earth. I was like, yeah. oh, my God, walk off the earth. Let's walk just see that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, really, it really works. It, 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 it is kind of nice that, that you know, verse two is actually fairly different than verse one, you know? Like, it, yeah. it actually, you see, the song actually goes somewhere. Even though it's a very short song, mm-hmm. I, think, I think it's under three minutes, is it? It's 2.12. It's like 22, I think. 12, look at that. 12. <laughs> Replay value. No, I yeah. was surprised that you, like, you did bring in like a, a bridge or something. Because at 212, yeah, yeah. it is pretty short, although songs do seem to be getting shorter. Did you guys think about a bridge at all? or? Um, not really. It was more just like we'll bring the chorus back a little bit broken down for the mm-hmm. end because it's a song, you know, people will know what the chorus sounds like and they'll just want to hear that again. They're not going to want to hear a bridge. They're going to want to just get right back into the song. We tried to make it so that it would be good on the radio based on like 212 is a great time if you're trying to get your song on the radio. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like anything under like 230 is like a great amount of time. Once you're oh, hitting like, wow. it ends up getting long. And yeah. the producer of that song, Corey LaRue, he works a lot on EDM and dance music as well. Yeah. So I kind of, and he's like so tight with where you place things in the song, how it sounds, mm-hmm. how it comes back in. So I just really trusted him on that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, oh, yeah, for sure. it seems like it's working out well. And yeah, I find it's, that it's not even, it's not even much of an introduction to this. You just kind of nope. yeah, drop right. right in and go. There's no yeah. one waiting around. I mean, even a lot of my songs, the structure too is the first verse is not usually the same melody in the second. It's like, it's kind of post Maloney where it's like you get this like hooky first verse, then you get a great chorus, then kind of get into like the rap chops or like whatever mm. you want to call it, where we're speeding things up. We're saying more words, packing more punch in the second verse, bringing it down a little bit before the chorus comes back in. And it really just like hits harder that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's I've always wondered about that. Um, I've, I've approached uh, songs as being, you know, three 
you know, 330, which is like what the, what songs used to be. And I guess songs are getting yeah. shorter. So eventually they're just going to be like, you know, like 10 seconds, I guess. But yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they already basically are when you look at like TikTok, TikTok and stuff. Like like now seconds, we're in this yeah. era where you have to think about the attention span of your listener and like, is it worth having another 30 seconds or a minute to a song of like, you kind of already said what you needed to say. Maybe yeah. you just hang up the phone now and if they want to call back, they will. And then if not, all right, great. You'll have another song coming out soon. Cause I was thinking, um, I always sort of played around with the idea of where you do your, your verse repetition. Like if you have, if your verse one and verse two are melodically similar, then you have, um, the variation on verse three, but if you don't, of course, if you don't have a verse three, then that's, you only have one place to have a verse variation, but, uh, it's, Ooh. it's interesting. Yeah. I've tried doing a variation on two and sometimes. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm a fan of the short first verse gets yeah. you in, leads you in, gives you the idea you're hooked. And then a chorus. And then my second verse is usually a little bit longer the melody is different. I never really have a third verse. I don't think I mm. think that it's usually just uh, two verses and then pre and then a chorus. Sometimes there's a bridge. Mm. Sometimes there's not. But other than that, yeah, mm. I'm again, I'm like growing up and I'm in this generation of people who are, have like 15 second attention spans before they swipe away on something. So I'm like, yeah. all right, how can I like get the most attention in the first 15 seconds? Like what is going to make people stick around and then make them also go check your music out yeah. to hear the rest of the song. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's even, even on this, even on streamings, it's like, it doesn't count as a play if they skip in the first 30 seconds. Right. So yeah. you've got to hook them early. Yeah. It's like, we're just reinventing, not even reinventing the way that songs are written because everybody writes differently, but just making sure that you utilize whatever time your short period of time you're taking from someone you want to give them something impactful, something that's going to make them laugh, something that's going to make them feel good, whatever it is, you want them to feel something yeah. in the first. Yeah, and and and, and true that everyone writes songs the way they write, but you can, but if, if you're if you are conscious of that, you can look at your song and go, okay, we got an eight, eight bar intro, let's make it two bars, right? Yeah. Can, we, yeah. can we say what we need to in two bars? Can we cut that last two lines out of that verse and maybe throw it into a bridge later? You know, can yeah. can we can we can we get to the chorus faster? Like there are ways to, yeah. to strategically do that if you want. Yeah. <laughs> And, yeah. and, and 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 provided it serves the song well. But of course, exactly. a lot of you know those eight bar intros, they were basically put in for radio so that the DJ yeah. could talk over talk. the beginning. Yeah. But now that radio is probably less of a force, um, I guess you still make money off the radio. But it, you know, if TikTok and and um, social media is your focus, then you know having eight bars of intro is just is just weird because no one's gonna pay attention well you know sometimes they do you can have a version with an intro and then a version without it i was gonna and ask know, you about that i know people who have done that recently actually um it was like oh should we even bother having this intro like they're not gonna and he was like let's just do a version with it and one without it so that you know if someone's asking for it for radio they can have the intro if they want it to like talk over it or whatever and it sets the vibe or they can get straight into the song. And I was like, that's a smart thing, I guess. Now we're moving into, now we got to make different versions of these songs that were meant to just be one song. But if you're going to do a post on Instagram or a post on TikTok, you don't have to necessarily have a short song. You just have to have a really catchy, cool 15 second segment. You can cut, that's true, you, yeah. you, you don't, you can have an eight bar intro, but maybe your, your TikTok post is only the chorus. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I love a good it. intro. Like a lot of like the greatest rock songs, which it's like, they're so memorable because of those melodies that you're hearing in these intros because, and then they're coming back somewhere in the song. It's like introducing you into like what you're going to get into mm -hmm. later in the song. And it's, you're just like listening to it, appreciating the music and the instruments for like yeah. what you're able to hear with 
Yeah, no and, vocals. And and very often it's setting a vibe, it's setting a tone, it's setting yeah. a kind of a mood. For a song like this, I do not mind one iota that you just blast right into it because it's mm -hmm. a very slamming song. You're you you want that message to come right out, and, and like you say, it's almost like you know you couldn't sing that day, so you're yelling it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's fine, right? So this kind it's kind of it, I, I kind of appreciate this song that it is just this like wicked little burst of energy, and you're in and you're out. Yeah. Not that's basically thing, i mean that's what we kind of wanted it to be i was in there and i was thinking i hadn't played any live shows at that time but i was like thinking i was like we need to make something that if i'm going to play this at my show people are going to like have high energy and they're going to like what they're hearing so i was like let's try and make something less you know uh program drums and stuff let's just go in for real instruments and then Obviously, that's not the first demo, but the first demo that we made was it had all of Willie's crazy guitar parts, which did make it into the final cut. <laughs> it just ended up being a little bit more refined and leaning into the pop sound a little mm -hmm. bit more. So it's a little more palatable than what you would get in the demo or also at the live show where that song translates really well live with a whole band because of the energy it has. It doesn't have to sound exactly like the recording, but it translates so well to a room full of people that they're like, did she really just like sing that song? That's insane. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So I do, I really appreciate that song for what it was. And definitely I'm really proud of what it turned out to be. And the people who worked on it, uh, songwriters, producers, and then the musicians who played like live bass and live guitar. It's like all those parts really brought it together mm. and gave it, like it just gave it what it needed to have. And for me as an artist, it felt like a song that I could put out and be like, yeah, like this is me. This has attitude. This is all the things I wanted it to be the way it was written. I always believed in it since the first day we wrote it, even though it probably sounded kind of like garbage <laughs> before it became good. But I was like, no, no, no. Like people need to hear that. So I'm really, really proud of that and so thankful for all of the people that I got to work on it with and excited and, for the songs and, and, that we and like you say like you're 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 a bit of a genre bending artist right so so if this is like your little your little punk ditty then you'll still do a ballad you'll still do a country yeah. song you'll still do yeah else, right? definitely. <laughs> I literally I was just writing a song yesterday and it's like now we did that little punk pop feel so it's like we have that audience it's like, what is next when we're making another song? It still has that Maggie Andrew flair, but maybe we dip our toe in a different genre that we haven't gone to yet just to like keep keep the like wheels rolling and bring it full circle so that maybe by the end we'll like get back in and then I can kind of like go wherever. Yeah. But I think genre has never really been something that I've been concerned about or something that I've really paid a lot of attention to because growing up, I was introduced to so much different music and I love so much different music. How can I choose? Like, do I want to stand beside Stevie Nicks or do I want to like stand beside Doja Cat or, you know, it's like, I want to be in all of these categories because I appreciate them all for what they bring. And it's beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's, fan that's fantastic attitude. You don't want to, you don't have everyone else will try their best to pigeonhole you into some box. Exactly. But if you're going to do that yourself, then yeah, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, and try to do it a lot of people you can collaborate with if you yeah. close off that box. And yeah. from writing with people who write country music, something that I don't do, mm. I you get so many great lyrics from people who can write country songs. Mm -hmm. It's like undeniable the things that you can hear from someone who is writing these ballads and love songs and songs about life. What you can add to your own music, it's if you don't step outside of the box and get into a different genre sometimes you're just gonna miss that it's like rap <laughs> blues jazz all of that anything any type of music someone else makes they have something that they could spice up your music with that'll make it sound unique yeah absolutely yeah and you're and you can always learn something too oh for sure which is sort of the, the whole point i think yeah oh, always, be the, always be the dumbest person in the room that's that. yes. Literally, I'm just like, anytime I'm with anyone, I'm like, what can you teach me? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I'm like, oh, what are you doing on the computer? Like, what program is this? What plugin is it? Oh, why do you do this? It's like, I work in dance music. I'm like, I don't make dance music, so I don't know. And then it's like you're unlocking all of these different little elements that you can add to your own music in your own way. And it's like, 
you never stop learning. Like I'm very grateful to be in an industry where anyone you're around, any room that you're in, someone can teach you probably like 10 different things. So I'm just like sucking it all in. I'm like, yes, tell me more. <laughs> that is okay. a, a great, great attitude, I think. Yeah, you know? that's, amazing, that's an amazing attitude. Okay, <laughs> I'm hearing the band. Um, that is all the time we have on Song Talk Radio. Special thanks to Maggie Andrew. Thanks Thank so much you. for coming on the show. Uh, where can our listeners hear more of your music? You go on Google and you Google Maggie Andrew anywhere you listen to music, anywhere you get your social media from, you'll find me. It's all right there. Cool. Awesome stuff. Um, and we want to hear from you, our listeners. So please send your comments on Facebook or Instagram to at Song Talk Radio or send us an email feedback at songtalk.ca. Also, be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes and subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on your favorite podcast provider. You can find links to all the products, books, and web services we mentioned on the show on our resources page on the website. And please join us at our next monthly Song Talk meetup, whether you're in Toronto for our in-person meetups or anywhere in the world for our online meetups. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend. Bring a song and a lyric sheet and get constructive feedback from other songwriters. Stop by songtalk.ca for the link. You can follow me at neilmodi.com. You can follow Phil at philemery.ca. And and Maggie, what's your what's your go-to favorite social media channel? Where do you go the most? Instagram's got to be my favorite one at Maggie D. Brew. Awesome. Uh, and be sure to stop by the website songtalk.ca to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Thanks for tuning in and keep, keep on, on writing. writing. <laughs> Good night, everyone. A good day, depending on the time. <laughs>